Hi, my name is John Gibbons and today we're going to look at differentiation of piriformis and sciatic nerve coming from the lower back. Imagine the patient presents with lower back pain, gluteal pain, hamstring pain, possibly into the calf, into the foot. Then there might be some history with the lower back. If you do the standard straight leg raise test or the Lasagas test, if I was to literally lift the leg up, you know, most patients, when you lifted the leg, would have 80, 90 degrees of range of motion. If you have a, a true sciatic pain, and you might find as you lift the leg up, the patient might say within 45 that they've got a presentation of pain from this position. If you back off slightly and dorsiflex, then that might give you more pain and that would elicit a neural sort of tension. If your pain is coming more anterior shin into the dorsal part of the foot, then it might be more of a peroneal component of the sciatic nerve. Then you do a similar test, so as you bring the leg up, where the pain is, you can back off. And then you can literally plant our flex and invert. And if that brings on pain to the dorsal part of the foot, then that would indicate a peroneal component. If your patient presents with that pain and you were to lift up the opposite leg, so this would be known as the contralateral straight leg raise test. So the pain is presented on the right hand side. By lifting the left hand side leg, if that mimicked pain in the right leg, then that might indicate a disc of origin, more likely from. L4-5 or L5-S1. If your patient only has pain in the central part of the buttocks going down into the posterior part of the leg, then it could be coming from the piriformis. When you test it for the piriformis and you're trying to differentiate between the two, yes, the patient might have pain around the 45-50 degrees, but then if you were to externally rotate the femur, which then slackens the piriformis, potentially the range of motion might improve and the pain gets less. And then if you were to internally rotate the leg, and now you are stretching the piriformis over the sciatic nerve, and then bring the leg in, it might make the symptoms worse and the range of motion might be a bit less. So by rotating the hip, it would change the length of the piriformis. In theory, if it's sciatic nerve coming from the lumbar spine, it shouldn't change with the movement of the femur. Okay?